Hello, good morning everyone. And this is Teddy. This is this is his rear. Um so I want to talk about something that has please don't mind all the fur, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh it's just a fact of life at this point. I wanna talk about an issue that I've seen experience and I've been wanting to make a video about it. Not that it will change anything, but it's just like kind of me talking through the subject and it's homelessness. And I just watched a video by Matteo um, from a month ago that I had actually started watching and I never finished. And today I was guided to go back and watch it and at the very end it was some heartbreaking news that a woman that he had helped um sorry i don't know if i referenced so it's winter is blue um mateo who owns that channel who is that channel he had helped a homeless woman earlier in that vlog and then she ended up having a seizure and passed away later on at the end of the video he had found out the news and I think for me it just kind of solidifies what I've been seeing and feeling so for context right now I am in California and I I don't know if California has one of the worst homelessness epidemics as they call it, or problems. Um, I feel like that was like a thing I saw, like Los Angeles was one of the worst home, like cities for homelessness, something like that. That was like a few years ago that I'd at least seen it on TV or wherever I had witnessed uh, that issue. And now I'm here and I see it. And it's heartbreaking to see, to be completely honest. Like, these are people who are regular human beings who had lives before they ended up on the streets. You know, I've seen people in tents. I've seen people, you know, with their shopping carts. The people who stand at the ends of... <laughs> Teddy, <laughs> who stand at the corners of like the streets and have signs and I saw that so far in every place I've been to but here it's so much more pronounced and so much more like in your face you have people who by the beach there's like those public bathrooms I opened the door once and there was a man like sleeping on the floor surrounded by his belongings on the bathroom floor you know I've seen people who are under tarps you know I feel like I'm just kind of a smidge away and that humbles me so much because I'm like I'm fairly aware of my situation I at least have a car right for however long I managed to keep this car um, but I have, like, all my belongings in my car, and it is absolutely, like, mind-boggling to me to even think that someone can carry their entire life in a shopping cart, let alone, like, some people have, like, the little wagon, some people have bags attached to a car, like, their bikes, and again, this isn't anything that's going to change anyone's view. Everyone kind of sees them. But it's just this reminder to treat every person as a human being, treat every individual as a human being. If I was in a better position financially to help, I would. Like, half the time, I'm going into, like, Wendy's or McDonald's to get myself, like, a sandwich or something because I earn just enough to get that, right? And you'll see people on the corners of places like this, and it's like, 
I wish I had the ability to help them more. And <laughs> I think that's one of my problems. I always want to be in a position to give, but you know, I really like, even though there are people who kind of televise or videograph or, you know, keep record of what they do, I think that, you know, a lot of people take it negatively, like, oh, why take credit or why try to, but it like, it's almost a reminder to people that this is how you're supposed to treat these people. I feel like we live in a in society that's so closed off to hardship every again every place i've gone to i've noticed the vast disparity between the haves and the have nots and like you'll have a very super wealthy area where you can tell they focus a lot on those people but then the homelessness is just terrible around the areas or you'll go from one town to another within the same area and it'll be wealthy and then terrible and that's just the fact of the United States but again seeing that video finishing that video from Mateo and even seeing this situation every single day that I'm here it's just like it really, for me, it really keeps me humble. It really makes me want to stay humble. I mean, right now, my only income is Instacart, right? And here, the, the pickings are very slim, so I really don't make that much. I was looking at my earnings between the last city I was in, Sedona, and here, and it's just like, I'm not even making half, if like, a quarter of what I used to make. It's just, and for me, I've definitely kind of reduced my compromising a lot because I recognize, for one, I live in my car, right? And before, I would kind of like move all my stuff upwards and use the trunk space. Um, you'll see Teddy. Teddy's, all of Teddy's like food and stuff is up there and he likes to lie up there. So now I try to just take the smaller orders anyway so I can fit it up in my front seat. But, you know, it's still like even the amounts are so much less than what I'm used to. And for me, like, just recognizing I'm behind on my bills. At any point, things can get repossessed, things can get taken away, and it's just like, I've always had this philosophy that even if I had nothing, I would be okay, I would be all right, and I would be able to kind of bounce back. But in my situation now, where I've applied to jobs, and I know my last video was about breaking out the matrix and all that stuff and how I don't want to get a job. I don't, but it's like, I have applied. And I feel like my resume is pretty strong for the jobs that I have applied to. And just not getting calls, not getting emails. And it's just like, it's a culture shock for real. And I don't think I will become hopeless in the sense of like losing my car, but it's like, I think we all have to be super aware that it can happen to anyone. Like, I'm sure there are plenty of homeless people on the streets who have degrees, who have, you know, the education or, you know, the charisma to be someone. And you hear certain stories of people who've risen up from homelessness and whatever. But what about the people who don't have those opportunities? And... I just, like, I think I've had to revolutionize even the way I think about homelessness um, for the past few years because it's, like, I think the common thing is, like, oh, just get a job. But when you realize just how separated homeless people become from society, 
it's kind of scary like again i'm not coming from a position of having talked to anyone i'm just like observing but it's like homeless shelters for example i have a friend who has a parent who's homeless and she told me that yes there's homeless shelters but they don't let them stay for more than a day and then you have places where it's like there may not even be homeless shelters or the availability of food for homeless people even with food banks you know i've been in a position where not me personally but in the household i was in you know they were getting things from the food pantry and it was like I personally didn't think we were any less off than a like regular, but you know, they went to the food pantry, they were able to get food easily. And it's like so we have people who are lower income or middle class who are able to access those same resources. So then there isn't as many resources for the people who actually need it. But then you don't also have places for homeless people to stay comfortably. And then when you see like lines and lines and lines of people in tents on the sidewalk, it's made to seem as like a public scourge to the regular people who get to go home at the end of the day. But it's like, they are human beings who also need a place to stay. Like you see all these apartment buildings going up all these houses and land that's being used for more and more housing. I personally, I was speaking to someone recently, I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if more and more people start to live in their vehicles and live in vans and live in RVs. Um, you know, moving out west, it's a lot more common here. And I'm just like, with rent prices being the way it is, it's very, it's really only the most wealthy people at this point who can afford it. The first time I'm, the only time, but the first time I moved out, I moved into an $1,800 apartment and I was working two jobs at the time. I quit one of the jobs because I finally felt like I could do that. And immediately I started struggling. And it was just like, why should we live in a society, a society of economy that you need to work multiple jobs to succeed? Like, if you aren't a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, um, in tech, all these things, what opportunities do you really have? And then there's, like, lower barriers to entry, like, oh, you can get into tech um, by joining a program or joining a boot camp, and then they'll help you. But then you look at the price of those camps or those things, and it's, like, several thousand dollars, and it's, like... For some of us, those thousand dollars aren't even accessible, you know? And I think it's just like, just a widening disparity of society. Like, I just think of my debt that I have now and where I would have been if I hadn't moved into an apartment. It would have been completely non-existent. I would have just had my student loans and my car note, and that's it because <laughs> all the debt I accrued was from living in an apartment and even thinking about it once I got my car back in 2020 yeah 2020 I like knew from an early early on that I would rather just move into my car that this was going to be my form of escape but if I hadn't let my entire mindset, like the thing that was being said to me at the time was, you know, find your own place, find your own apartment, like move out, all that stuff. So I think my paradigm is very focused around, it had to be an apartment. And then I got the apartment. It was fun, it was independent, and it was terrible. <laughs> um, it was, no, it was great, but it was terrible financially. And I'm just like, how many other people have been in that exact situation? Like, I got to a point where I couldn't pay my monthly bills at all. And I even offered to the apartment, like, hey, I will move out. Like, I'm already moving out. You can go ahead and relist it. I just cannot pay. 
and instead of like listening to me and just letting it be like okay you know what we recognize this and we won't like instead of doing that the person who I spoke to just kind of laughed at me and was like oh well you know just whatever you can pay like I'm telling you I cannot pay and instead of assisting me or letting me leave freely you make it into this whole thing where it's almost like I couldn't leave like oh well if you leave now you're gonna have to pay the next several months of rent anyway and I'm like but I can't pay the current like at that point I think I've missed two monthly payments and I was like okay I'm already moving out I'm already selling all my stuff you know whatever and in terms of that I do have to um call them not call the like call the court system because I was told that my case was dismissed like kind of like forgiven but then I've also had to pay back that rental amount so I need to figure out the discrepancy there because well for one I can't pay that anymore anyways but just knowing if I'm even I was even supposed to be paying anything back <sighs> but yeah I'm like being on the edge of that of homelessness of like recognizing how close I am to it it's just kind of like I mean I will definitely get a better situation for Teddy if anything does happen to me but it's just kind of wild to like realize just how fragile of a system it is how easy it is like you can have everything one moment and then lose it the next and I see some of these people who you know some people might be homeless by choice like I'm kind of homeless by choice I'm living in my car by choice because who's gonna pay that rent amount who's gonna get a mortgage like those aren't even options that I want to consider so yeah, I, I know I've been rambling, <laughs> but it's like, just remember to treat everyone as human beings. And I know there are people who scam, right? We, you might have heard the story of like a woman who is actually pretty wealthy, who just kind of dressed up as a homeless woman and then stayed on the street corners and got money that way. But at the end of the day, she would, you know, go home fix everything and she would be all good and you know and yeah that's one reality where people are using it as a scam but the broader reality is it's many people's way of life and it's not as simple as getting a job it's not as simple as you know so many things are tied to your address so many things are tied to if you don't have an address then you're fucked you know so many things are tied to like bank, bank information, bank statements. What if you don't have access to a bank? What if you can't apply to a bank? You know, so many things are tied to your credit score. My credit score is steadily declining. I can't borrow anything. So how much more for the person who has even a non-existent credit score or like, so many systems are built in to keep us oppressed and keep us trapped that it's like, if you don't have those factors, like, you're just going to be stuck regardless. So, yeah, just treat everyone as human beings. Treat any everyone as normal people. I will admit for myself, like, yeah, there are times when I pass by homeless people and I'm fearful because I'm by myself and no one's ever really approached me, but still, you know, there's that, like, immediate fear as if, like, they're gonna attack you or hurt you and it's like, that's not the case. They're just, they need as much help as anyone else, you know? My one experience with a homeless person, um, a homeless man that actually communicated with 
was back in New Jersey um, when I was going to college in university. Um, and there was a certain street I would walk down and this man would always be in the same spot. And because I have that heart that when I do have money to give, I want to give, I would give him like, you know, um, I think I gave him like 15 or $20 one day when I had it and he was so grateful and I was like, you're welcome, <laughs> you know? And I think if I had the time to talk to him, I probably would have, but you know, he was so grateful for it. And I was just like, and for the most part, they're respectful because they're like, you know, you're not obligated to give me anything, but if you do, that's great. And yeah, so that's it. <laughs> um, it's just something that's been on my heart to talk about, to think about, and seeing it kind of in my face here in California is just like even more and then recognizing my own situation I'm like even more like it's such a different world but it makes them no less human and I say them very loosely it makes us no more human, no less human to have money or not have money. But yeah, <laughs> that is all I have to say on the matter for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.